Hey guys, it's Hink here. So rarely am, do I feel like my mind is actually kind of blown and I was going back through the literature on caffeine and I came across this paper here and it just blew my freaking like mind wide open because I think that we are looking at caffeine in the entirely different way. Not only do I think that we are largely wrong about caffeine, but I actually think it could be like way more beneficial than we thought. I knew it was fake. I knew it. I knew it. I know you, a lot of you guys believe, oh, but hold up, caffeine is a vasoconstrictor. Yeah, that's true, kind of. We're gonna break down the literature today. All right, guys, first, let's take a look at basically what caffeine does on actually the vascular endothelium. So what does that mean? Well, the actual lining of the blood vessels that's most important in actual like vascular health, the same endothelial lining that's in your penis that I designed Vigor to help with, okay, to keep it healthy and functioning and maximizing erection quality, caffeine has an effect on that. Just to emphasize like how important the endothelial function is, so here's a paper here and here's another paper here that talks specifically about the direct link between the endothelial function and actual things like erectile dysfunction or, or penile function, okay? So I'm not just blowing smoke, guys, there's a direct link. Guys, in this paper, they actually put up this chart here, okay, wherever Callie puts it, that actually shows that direct correlation between caffeine actually intake and the amount of nitric oxide or basically the the particle that's responsible for causing the vasodilation that's causing the actual erection okay guys so the more nitric oxide the more erection basically and here's this graph you can see that the amount of relaxation which is on the y-axis along with like the actual caffeine intake there's a direct correlation so basically the more caffeine you have to an extent the more you actually have stimulation of the production of nitric oxide. That is a very good thing when we're talking about penile health and erectile health. Here's a study that actually looked at rabbit ar arteries and actually like the internal mammaries arteries, so like the arteries that kind of go along your inner chest wall here in humans, and it showed that caffeine actually had a potent vasodilatory effect, guys, meaning it causes blood vessel relaxation and more blood flow. So here's an actual quote from the paper. They actually says, to summarize, the effect of caffeine on the vascular endothelium is a greater expression of nitric oxide, okay? So more nitric oxide with caffeine, that's one good thing. Let's move on to the next point. So the next thing they look at is actual like smooth muscle cells. Guys, like I, I hope like erectile anatomy, I hope you've seen enough of my videos to know that basically the way an erection works is the smooth muscle cells in the actual penis. So there's no skeletal muscle in a penis, guys. So a lot of guys in penis enlargement equate, oh, well, if you can make your biceps bigger, you can make your penis bigger, da derp -da derp Like, no, it doesn't work like that. It's completely different muscle. All muscle is not the same. Specifically in the penis, it's smooth muscle cells. And the way the smooth muscle works Works, they don't actually contract they relax and when they relax they let in blood and when it lets in that blood that blood causes pressure against the actual veins causing the obstruction of the venous outflow meaning more blood flow in no blood flow out that's how an erection happens we want smooth muscle cells to relax does caffeine help with that Yes, it does, guys. This is a specific section in this paper. They do mention that, like, initially with caffeine, there is, like, a very transient and very slight vasoconstriction. So here's a paper here. It's interesting to note that in the experiments carried out with caffeine in our laboratory, in human arteries and animal models, that this contraction was not seen, meaning that they did not see smooth muscle contractions, which leads us to believe that it's probably a very slight vasoconstrictor, okay? So there is an initial like slight reaction and then smooth muscle cells dilation. So more nitric oxide already. And now we know that there's actually more smooth muscle dilation as well. Two things very important for erectile function. So this is looking very promising as far as when we're talking about enlargement, especially as far as things like minimizing injury risk and maximizing expansion when we're talking about things like girth work. So caffeine is looking very promising guys, but stay tuned. So guys, I already made actually a previous video on caffeine. Like if you haven't seen it, like you should check it out because I talk about more of these like kind of basic things. But once again, like you guys have, so Cialis, Viagra, Tadalafil, Sildenafil, okay. These things are what we call phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. Basically, a phosphodiesterase is an enzyme that actually converts away from the pro-erection like 
materials that you need, okay? So if you are trying to get an erection, the more phosphodiesterase you have, the less your erection capability is. So when you inhibit that enzyme that like blocks that molecule, you are going to lead to more erections. That's how like Cialis and Viagra work. Here is a beautiful chart that they pulled up on this paper that shows that caffeine literally is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, okay? Specifically when you're talking about like Viagra Cialis, you're talking about a PDE5 or a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor, but in this paper, it shows that it's a non-selective phosphodiesterase inhibitor. So it's going to work on multiple different pathways here. But as you can see here, guys, it says, you can see where it says like caffeine, which has a negative inhibition of phosphodiesterase, which leads to increased cyclic AMP and, and a decrease in your calcium channel. Okay. All of those things are what leads to basically vasodilation and more erection. So literally, caffeine literally functions similar to a Cialis or Viagra, okay? It's not the same. I mean, you can't just like take a whole bunch of caffeine and expect to have the same effect of Cialis or Viagra, but it is similar along that pathway, which would be a very good thing. You guys, like I've made countless videos about like the role of Cialis, Viagra, PDE5 inhibitors and how they can be so beneficial and even how they can limit fibrosis. Okay, if you haven't seen those videos, please check them out on my channel. It's also important to note that caffeine can actually increase the absorption of PDE5 inhibitors. So let's say you like drink a cup of coffee and then you take a Viagra, okay? Number one, that would actually prevent you from having the headache associated with PDE5 inhibitors causing cerebral dilation. So the cerebral effect of caffeine that it causes vasoconstriction up here. If you take caffeine, like if you have a headache and you take caffeine, that's why caffeine is actually a headache medicine. It causes vasoconstriction up here, which actually prevents you from having headaches. So some people take Viagra or even something like Vigor. There was one guy who, who wrote, oh, I took Vigor and I got ringing in my ears one star. It's because it causes vasodilation. It's a potent vasodilator, like you freaking idiot. It's Of course it's going to, some people are very sensitive to it. And if he had just taken caffeine, he wouldn't have had that. Or maybe he needs half a dose because it's so strong guys but that's neither here nor there okay what I was saying is that caffeine actually inhibits the CYP34A enzyme. I know, big words, but basically the enzyme that degrades sildenafil, it actually inhibits that. You can actually have increased absorption through caffeine's effect on the actual drug itself. So caffeine can literally potentiate the effects, meaning prolong the effects of like Viagra Cialis. So something to think about. Another kind of revelation, I talk about like how all the like nitric oxide synthase in like producing things inside of Vigor, but like, and that's gonna be the last time I mentioned bigger guys. I'm sorry if I'm being annoying about it, but caffeine literally activates nitric oxide synthase to increase production of nitric oxide, okay? Here's a, a beautiful chart that they put in this paper. Now I'll make sure Callie puts the link in the description of this video, but you can see that the way caffeine works through basically calcium channels is that it literally increases your nitric oxide, which literally leads to more vasodilation, okay? So guys, this video should put to bed any kind of, any any time, if any of my guys that are on Reddit, by the way, guys, my like new subreddit r slash hink is live. If you want to ask me questions, I might get to them. It depends on how busy I am, especially if you want to give me video suggestions, please like join the subreddit at r slash hink for like more my YouTube channel specific rather than r slash getting bigger, which is more of like a general thing. But if you see somebody on there that's like, is caffeine good or bad? Like now there's definitive evidence. I think caffeine is pretty much good. There's one final thing that we need to get to or maybe a couple final things that we need to get to. So guys, I don't know if you know how this works, but like, so adenosine is something that basically makes you tired. It binds to the adenosine receptors and it causes like basically fatigue. What caffeine does is it binds to that receptor so the adenosine can't get there. But because it's bound to that receptor, there's no uptake, but adenosine kind of builds up systemically in your body. When you take caffeine, you actually, especially if you don't take anything else with it, as soon as that bond with the caffeine is broken in that receptor, you're gonna get flooded with adenosine. And that's why you crash if you just take caffeine. Okay, and I'm going to give you a potential hack that I got from BD and Perv on like something that can help with that. The importance of adenosine is it also kind of systemically causes like vasoconstriction. Okay, the receptors are blocked. You have a buildup of adenosine in your body. There are several receptors. The more adenosine that you have in your body, it works on these different receptors and largely adenosine causes vasodilation. So by literally like blocking up your adenosine receptors and having a buildup of adenosine in your body, it goes to other places and it literally acts in a vasodilatory way that way as well, okay? Now, 
One of the downsides about caffeine is like literally you can, the more you take, the less of a response you get each time. Guys, if you're noticing that you you're basically can drink a cup of coffee and go to sleep, you probably need to abstain from, t from drinking any kind of caffeine for like a week, okay? But here's where the problem is, there's literally a withdrawal. So you can become literally physically addicted to caffeine, meaning if you stop taking it, you will have withdrawal symptoms, okay? Now, part of the reason for this is because when you have chronic blocking of the adenosine receptors, you literally have a process that's called upregulation, where you have an increase in the number and the sensitivity of the receptors, okay? Even in people with like low, ca low caffeine intake, like one to two cups of coffee per day. If you are increasing the number of adenosine receptors and then you literally stop taking caffeine, you have all of this adenosine that now has all of these additional adenosine receptors to bind to that can like flood your body with symptoms like fatigue, headaches. Headaches in particular, like caffeine withdrawal headache, that's literally because like, because of all these increased adenosine receptors getting flooded with adenosine, it causes vasodilation, especially in your head, which leads to headaches, guys. Blood vessel dilation in your head leads to headaches, okay? If you learn nothing else from this video, it's kind of a cool anatomic fact, okay? Now, what is the potential downside? So what would be an argument that could be made for why you would not want to take caffeine for PE? So I actually had this conversation, I was talking with BD and he made a very good point. So for those that don't know who BD is, he's actually like my business partner and uh, the creator of the subreddit, Getting Bigger. First of all, guys, we are working on a Vigor 2.0, which is like a pre-workout. And I said I wouldn't mention Vigor, but I was saying to him, hey dude, we need to make a caffeine containing Vigor because look at all these benefits of caffeine when it comes to like vasodilation, nitric oxide, et cetera. It actually complements what we have in here. He said, yeah, but what about like the effect on the sympathetic nervous system and I was like, okay touche what did he mean by that so guys like in general we were taught in med school when it comes to like erections and ejaculation something that's called point and shoot meaning point meaning like you get an erection like point that's p like parasympathetic innervation okay and then shoot meaning ejaculation is actually like sympathetic controlled okay if you have two, sympathetic nervous system is like fight or flight, guys. Your parasympathetic is like rest and digest, okay? Hopefully that was kind of simple. But long story short, what that means is that if you are stimulating your sympathetic nervous system, it is going to actually like cause vasoconstriction in itself because that's what your sympathetic nervous system is largely responsible for. So that can actually inhibit vasodilation because of that sympathetic stimulation. What they saw is that as caffeine, as it blocks those adenosine receptors, it actually stimulates the activation of the sympathetic nervous system in conscious patients. So if you actually drink caffeine, you do get some nervous some sympathetic nervous system stimulation that's why like actually caffeine can cause things like anxiety okay because of that sympathetic innervation there's studies that show that literally ca the consumption of coffee produced an increase in your sympathetic tone okay a lot of the theory and i don't want to butcher this that like perv and bd are working on right now i don't know who started it but is basically the more sympathetic tone you have the less you'll be able to relax your penile tissue like i think bd had a client that he talked about on our live stream guys if you haven't seen it's pretty interesting where the client was just so stressed out all the time he was just all stressed out all that sympathetic nervous tone and as a result he was not getting any res results as far as PE because there was all that sympathetic tone limiting his actual stretch. I think for this guy, he actually started, uh, he started using weed, okay? And the weed helped him relax and immediately he saw like within one workout an increase in his size. So guys, I'm certainly not advocating weed use, but the point is it can help with relaxation. Caffeine in theory could stimulate a sympathetic response. Now, personally, do I think that that would be enough to outweigh like all of those other benefits? No. Also, personally, I consume probably far too much caffeine. The limit, the safe limit recommended for most people is about 400 milligrams of caffeine per day, which is like four and a half cups of coffee a day, depending on the size of your coffee. I definitely do that. I, you know, I, I still continue to grow, okay? And like, for those that haven't seen my most recent product picks, it's actually on my subreddit, r slash hink. Yep, my Jimmy is out there for the world to see that my progress in six months has been right at about a quarter of an inch. And guys, if you're interested in getting bigger like me, I have my full course, it's live. I break down everything on how to get bigger in a simple, easy to digest and really time efficient routine. It's how I put on an inch and a half like over these past several years. So if you're interested, check it out.
And guys, I had also talked about this previously, but caffeine intake is actually associated with a decreased risk of erectile, defun of erectile dysfunction, like in this paper here. And part of basically literally the mechanism they describe is that it causes vasodilation, not constriction, which actually leads to better erections. And they actually saw that the biggest it basically reduction in your risk of erectile dysfunction was in the group that, that consumed about 170 to 375 milligrams of caffeine per day. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just something to think about. And guys, here's a little tidbit here. There's something that's called theocrine or teocrine. It's actually basically isolated from the leaves of a specific type of tea. It works, it's like a very similar molecular compound to caffeine, but it works differently and it works on both like the adenosine receptor and it works on the dopamine pathway. Long story short is actually you can get more sustained bursts of energy without that like dip when your caffeine levels drop and you get hit with all that fatigue. BD actually put me on this and I think BD got that from Perv and I talked with both of them about it. I've been using it. I just went on Amazon and ordered theocrine guys. I don't, I don't have like my own theocrine supplement yet. It has made a world of difference as far as my alertness and I, and I take far less caffeine when I supplement it with actually the theocrine and there's actually clinical trials showing that it can improve cognition and even physical performance, especially when you take the two together. So Guys, you should check that out, okay? If you're interested and you take caffeine and wanna maybe reduce your caffeine intake. So guys, what are my takeaways? Honestly, I think caffeine is good for PE. If somebody was like, do you recommend that I take caffeine? I would say yes, obviously not before bed because anything that's gonna interrupt your sleep is gonna interrupt with things like natural testosterone production during at night, nocturnal erections, growth hormone secretion, all of that stuff occurs at night. So I would never wanna interfere with that. But during the day, especially maybe first thing in the morning before PE, Absolutely, I think it would be a good thing in general. That being said, if you find that it is stressing you out, like you take caffeine and you get all nervous and anxious and jittery, by the way, theocrine doesn't have those jitters and, and whatnot because it, because it works on a different pathway, then I would recommend you don't take caffeine, okay? But in general, I think it's good. I think as far as its smooth muscle relaxation, its nitric oxide ability, and even its literal phosphodiesterase inhibition all make it kind of like amazing. So. That's my recommendation, guys. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, appreciate a like and maybe even a subscription if you like what I do. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.